This is a finite element analysis of a ball bearing assembly where I have removed some of the balls that are not going to be experiencing high loads and only left along the bottom portion of the bearing and I have a load applied vertically downward to this bearing and I can see the stresses in those balls and in the raceways when I do that. So if I go back to this view and then I open a slice plane and then look at the front of it, you'll see where we have contact. We have that the ball is embedded in the groove of the outer race and the groove of the inner race. This allows this particular bearing to handle some axial loads. And you'll notice that my force here is tilted just a touch because I added a slight axial load to this bearing. That changes the load that is experienced by all of the balls in the bearing and the loads along the races of those bearings. And so I can now do a direct comparison of two different loading states, where in one case, I have the axial load applied. You can see it on that side of the screen. And on the other case, I just have the radial load applied. And it changes the stress state that the balls will experience when they are exposed to this loading. We have to consider now the possibility of varying the loads that are applied to the shaft. Then we are going to be changing the loads that the bearings feel. Well, we want to know the representative number of rotations for each load that we apply. Now you have to remember that this force times the load raised to the power of 1 over A is going to be equal to some constant. We can raise everything to the power of A and rewrite that equation f to the a power times l is going to be equal to a constant. That puts you right on the load lifetime curve. And here's a reproduction of the load lifetime curve, where now what we have done is write it in terms of radial load to the power a plotted against the lifetime l. And the important thing in here is that this line right here, remember this is the power law equation, and the way we've written it here, the load to the a power times L is equal to some constant. So everywhere on that line, you're equal to the same constant. So that is for a set and fixed reliability. I want to talk just a bit more about this curve. So we have expressed our load life curve in terms of a, an equivalent radial force raised to the power A plotted against a lifetime L, where that lifetime is in a number of rotations. And we have said that this curve represents a set reliability. Let's just say 90%. So you know that on this curve, there is a C10 and L10 value somewhere. Let's just imagine the C10, L10 value is right here. That means that we could pick off our C10 rating for our 10 to the 6 cycle lifetime right off of this plot and it would give us that load lifetime relationship with 90% reliability. Every point on this curve represents load lifetime pairs for 90% reliability. Right, so that's the way you think of this curve to begin with. Now we have to imagine, suppose we have a load F1 raised to the power A, and instead of running L1 cycles, we just run a little L1. So we run a number of rotations that are less than the number of rotations that are guaranteed with the 90% reliability curve. And so what we have done is we've used up an amount of life right here, represented in this cross-sectional area. So that life that has been used up is simply going to be F1 to the power A times L1. And the fraction of life used up will be a ratio of that rectangular area to the total rectangular area. And so the fraction of life used is going to be F1 to the A power times L1 divided by F1 to the A power times capital L1. Well, that just gives me L1 over capital L1. And that's the key to linear damage mechanics. So let's move on to another example where we plot yet again the equivalent radial load raised to the power A against the lifetime along x-axis. And let's imagine an, a loading spectrum, which is shown by these green rectangles. Let's say this is rectangle 1, this is 2, and this is 3. And then we're going to repeat it. We're going to go back to 1, 2, and 3. And we wonder how many times we can do that. 
that before we have exhausted the reliability of the system. I'm going to calculate the area of each of these rectangles. The first rectangle shown, shown here is going to have an area F1 to the A power times little L1, lowercase l1. This rank rectangle is going to have F2 to the A power times L2, and this one F3 to the A power times L3. We add those up. We add F1 to the A power times L1 plus F2 times L2, F3 times L3, and that gives us a measure of damage. It's going to be a fraction of the overall life of the system, but we have to figure out how we're going to accommodate that damage and how we're gonna turn it into something that we can use in design. So what we know immediately is that each of these little load rectangles, if you look carefully, will have an associated intercept with this 90% reliability curve that will give us the, ratio, the relationship between F1 to the A power and the lifetime, L1. That's the 90% reliability lifetime. For rectangle two, we come over to the curve and we identify the L2 value. And for rectangle three, we come over to the curve. It's gonna be way out here. And we identify the L3 value, the 90% reliability lifetime for that given applied equivalent radial load. So that means that we can take advantage of the fact that the force F1 to the A power times capital L1 hits that curve, and so it's going to be equal to a constant. That same constant is equal to F2 to the A power times capital L2, which is equal to F3 to the A power times capital L2. And then we can replace each of those radial loads to the A power by K, over capital L, where L is the lifetime associated with that load. When we replace those things and we put them back up into this damage equation, we find that we have K out front and the ratios of the fraction of lifetime L1 over capital L1, L2 over capital L2, likewise L for L3. And all of that then can give us a fraction of life term. This is our fraction of life. Now, if we want to run that repeatedly, we have used up all of our life when that fraction goes to one. So we can multiply this periodic loading by n, and it tells us the number of times we can do it. This is called linear damage mechanics, and it assumes that the order you add these things doesn't matter. It's a pretty gross oversimplification, but it is an approach that can be used to help you incorporate a spectrum of loads into a reliability calculation so that you can choose C10 values appropriate to that particular loading spectrum.